The Doc Rosp! Nine, fours, twenty-nine, and thirty. But first, my thoughts on something else. Rufio. He's Pangarang. Paper v. Plastic? Just carry it, you lazy-ass paraplegic. Oh, also, Young Justice, the show that's like Teen Titans, but extreme and with occasional racist caricatures of Koreans. Now, I like the first season of this show, slightly more often than not, so I figured I'll give my impressions on the first episode of season two. Oh, and you should know damn well by now that by impressions, I don't mean my thoughts. Here goes. <clears throat> this is Nightwing. Everybody whelmed? See, cause that was my thing I said last season. Back then I was Robin. Time has passed since then. So, everyone do a roll call, but pretend your names come up in natural conversation. Acknowledged by me, Superboy. And yes, I still have a stick up my ass. Calm down, ex-boyfriend Superboy, who's no longer my boyfriend. Oh hey, I'm Miss Martian. I hit puberty even though I'm a Martian. It makes me complex and into different boys. Oh, be silent, talking alien spacesuit that only I, the current incarnation of Blue Beetle, can hear. You must let me ask my friend, Hefes, what is up, for my Latino sass cracks even myself up. Yeah, and I'm the new Robin. Definitely not the old Robin, not charming at all, yeah. And I'm Bumblebee, but I'm more a ripoff of the Wasp, so there's no need to sue us, Transformers. And I'm Wonder Girl. And I'm Batgirl. And, and we're, we're completely, completely different. different. Now let's go shopping, but be technically tomboy, so it's okay. Girl stuff. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I'm Beast Boy. I don't really talk like that or do anything cool. But I am here if you're into... Shotokan furry stuff. And last but not least, there's me! Some kind of fish guy who feels like he's on the wrong show for some reason. And that was Young Justice Season 2, Episode 1. Of course, now the show is called Young Justice Ultimate Alien Force The Next Mutation, and my dialogue was a lot more subtle and nuanced. But you get the idea. And I like this first episode. Not because there's anything good about it, but because it gave me an excuse to chatter like a monkey. On with the show then, Force 29, the 27th episode. We begin with Donna Troy having a subtle dream in which he reminds himself that he hasn't been able to find the space monster he needs to heal his dying friend. He reminds himself by shouting, Balls, I haven't been able to find the space monster I need to heal my dying friend. Uh, then he wakes up. Meanwhile, later, or... Earlier, well, it's daytime now, and Fjorsen Guard's being creepy again. That's in light of a new semester at Spacey Space High. How is Fjorsen Guard being creepy? Well, he says something like these exact words. Those sparkling new students. My heart is throbbing with excitement. Uh, picking a random extra now to stock, Fjorsen Guard gets creepily close and proceeds to bully the extra into joining his gang of pals. Unfortunately for him, the extra lad he picked has already been whipped well and good by some girl who shares a matching name keychain with him. Huh. Uh, said some girl I'll henceforth refer to as Haughty Extra Number 2. Not that Extra Lad is Extra Number 1 or anything like that. I'm just going with my gut on this one. Uh, Haughty Extra 2 drags off Extra Lad, and Fjorsen Guard's feeling rejected. Boring douchebag comments. It sucks, but like, being apathetic is the nature of today's youth. And also, I'm trying, but I'm never going to be cool again after saying that line about darkness and kick knows the swan hero's heart. Cute title sequence, Fjorsen Garden Pals have a new teacher. Well, sort of. It's a recurring character I'm not sure if I've mentioned. Well, he used to call this character Spender Snap. For he is like Principal Skinner, but wears rainbow suspenders and snaps them to look gentlemanly and down to earth. I don't like this name though, so I'm calling him Rainbow Joe. Anyhow, he's Fjorsengard's new teacher, because the teacher from the Arkwood Secretariat didn't come back for some reason. And Rainbow Joe also doesn't like Team Fjorsengard because they're delinquent punks. And he's really allergic to delinquent punks, they make him overact like hell. So Rainbow Joe overacts us into the next scene where Extra Lad is getting cheeky. See, he's wandering about the set saying lines. Orko catches this and muses, Hey, that cheeky son of a bitch thinks he's people. Wait, maybe I can use that. He then pushes Extra Lad into taking one of his evil space monster drug switches. 
And then it's back to Fjords and Garden Pals being wackily followed by Rainbow Joe because they act really suspicious all the time. They ultimately ditch him by sicking their food robots on him and then fly off to the moon. At which point we return to Extra Lad, now being consoled by Haughty Extra number two. And by being consoled, I mean she's telling him he's a worthless sack of shit that'll have to depend on her forever. His response is akin to, I, I guess... I guess I'll use this switch which a strange man in a rubber outfit told me would give me power. And then he turns into the fly. Uh, the classic one, 58. It prompts Hoddy Extra number two to exclaim, Holy Kafka-esque rockin' of Baxter Stockman. He's so ugly now. But so fly too. At which point the newly born fly, which isn't the fly but looks like the fly, jumps off the rooftop of the school and out into the streets. Ah, uh, but Donna Troy saw the whole thing, because he peered out the window to the roof of the school. He does that now and then, just in case. All the same, Donna Troy is just a little bit pissed off now that he's basically filling the role of hamburger robot for the episode. Pissed as he is, he bumps into Rainbow Joe and not so subtly shakes his fist at him. This son of a bitch is hindering my monster tracing plan by two seconds. Yeah, I know it's getting worse. Fuck you, it's hot in here. Meanwhile, on the moon, Jarson Garden pals are gradually noticing that Jarson Guard should be fighting that new fly monster who's hopping about on Earth. So they get on that. Of course, Jarson Guard beats Troy to the punch in facing the monster, but alas, his spring leg isn't much help against the monster's springiness. Yes, his plan was to fight springs with springs, and I think now's a good time to remind you of some of the other things in Force's repertoire. Let's see here, there was a flamethrower, an electric field, shoulder-mounted laser cannons, a giant magnet that can fly around and make tornadoes and shit, a boot-shaped gravity field, and yes, a giant faucet that appears on his foot that works like a hose. He's a fly if you were ever going to use that on something. But Fjorsengard instead opts to keep springing around like an idiot. That's until Donna Troy finally arrives to help out. Uh, and by help out I mean rip off the scene from Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon where the woman tries to fly away with Kung Fu but keeps getting pulled to earth with Kung Fu. The woman in this case being Fly Guy. Which makes it a little bit awkward when Donna Troy mounts him. Actually, that was awkward anyway. Uh, but in the end, Die Flag gets away anyhow, leaving Donna Troy to exclaim, That dude was a total puss! He must not be the monster I'm looking for to heal my dying friend! Oh hey, Forrest, were you wondering why I fought you several episodes ago? It's because of my dying friend who- Ignoring Troy completely, Fjorsengard walks over to Haughty Extra number two and asks if Extra Lad was the monster of the week. She tells him, Well, duh, it's not like it's possible for me to know more than one person. At which point, Donna Troy becomes completely worthless for the episode. Transitional elsewhere, Strawberry Ice Cream Head Lady reminds Orko that as an overconfident villain, he's probably gonna die soon. Knowing not how to negate his overconfidence, he shrugs it off. Transition in another place, Rainbow Joe is still hounding Jarson Garden Pal so as to pretend he's an important character. Transition in... uh, fuck it, elsewhere, Huddy Extra 2 meets up with the fly who looks like the fly but isn't the fly, he's just A the fly. He tells her that he got his freaky space monster switch from a teacher. So instead of making any effort to grab the switch and stop him, Huddy Extra 2 runs off to look for suspicious teachers, finding instead only fellow extras dressed like like teachers, her extraordinary nature eventually gravitates her behind Fjorsengard and Rainbow Joe. At this point, Fjorsengard gets a call from Excitable Girl, who excitably exclaims that the monster of the week, once called A the Fly, not to be confused with the fly, which is also a fly, is flying about the city again, and Fjorsengard should probably get on that. Of course, Hadi Extra 2 hears the message and goes to run off to talk the monster out of being ugly so he won't have to die later. Hard as it is to believe, that doesn't pan out and the monster powers up. And that's when Fjorsengard, our hero who can fly and has a motorcycle, arrives late to the scene. I've done a try too, because he didn't get to do anything earlier. But it's too late. The monster is slightly stronger enough to fend them off for the rest of the episode. For now, the monster, Flance Fly Hopopotamus, is able to split into a swarm of insects, like uh, the Boogeyman from Nightmare Before Christmas, or the Pain from Metal Gear Solid 3, which I hope to get away from finally. So much for that. 
As a swarm, he swarms Jarsengard, causing Boring Douchebag to conclude that Jarsengard needs a new gadget. Sure, he could use the hose foot, but that was like so a few episodes back. He manages with the flamethrower, though, and almost finally finishes off Fly Eyes, until Hottie Extra 2 stands in his way. And also trips Jarsengard because he didn't catch on the last several times she tripped him in the episode. Yeah, I didn't mention that, because there is stuff that I do cut from this summary. Sometimes. A back on the moon mace with the goddamn ringing noise every 10 seconds, Excitable Girl is worried. See, it's a bad day for your frozen guard to face a schoolgirl as he's in a creepy feely punch me in the face so I can see your real emotions kind of mood. She worries a boring douchebag, but he's giving his best Scooby-Doo at the time-space warping entrance to their moon base. And by that, I mean he's looking emotionless, but he's still pointing to... Oh no! It's Rainbow Joe, who just discovered the ridiculous entrance to their secret moon base. Which would be a cliffhanger, I guess, but I'm behind, so I'm moving on to the next one. 